All right, hello. Here's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to look at the Algebra Level 2 2015 exam, and I'm just going to go over question one. So I'm going to open this up, and I'm just going to go over each question, and I'm going to kind of take it from the student's perspective and just try, try to answer all of these as a whole and, and just look at it. Okay, so let's, let's begin. All right, so the students open their booklet, and this is the first page they see. I'm just going to work down here and finish off with this one, and I'll be I'll be zooming in a bit to take a closer look at the problems. So let's uh, let's begin. All right, find the value of log two ten twenty four. Uh, if I don't know what that is, that means it's equaling x some number. Now to get an idea, I write this in index form. That gives me a better idea. The base is two. The exponent is x. And the power, the answer is 1024. And we can use logs here, or you can know your powers of 2. 2 to what power is 1024? 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024. So x is, x is equal to 10, if you know your powers of 2 by heart, which we all should. All right, next one. Solve this equation. Uh, pretty, pretty similar there. Uh, let's see, write an index form. So 4 to the power of 2, 4 to the power of 2 equals that expression right there, 3w plus 1. All right, 4 squared is 16, of course, equals 3w plus 1. This would be a nice achieved problem. Minus 1 from the other side, 15 equals 3w. You can see where I'm going with this. 3 times what is 15? 5, of course. Is that right? Of course that's right. Done. Moving along. Lucas says that this equation has only one solution. Is he correct? Find the solution or solutions and justify your answer. Well, let's see if Luca. Very similar. First of all, to have these three questions all rewriting in index form. Uh, not too much variety there, but that's okay. So we're going to say, let's write it in the index form. X to the power of 2 equals this expression right here, 4X plus 2, 12. And I don't know, Luca, I, I think it looks like a quadratic, which means we might get two solutions. So I think he might be wrong. Set it equal to zero. X squared minus 4X minus 12 equals zero. I think Luke is wrong because I think that can factorize. Can it not? What do I get? Yes, it can. It's X minus 6 times X plus Two equals zero. Uh, Luca, sorry, buddy. X equals six, or x equals negative two. Unfortunately, Luca is wrong. All right, we wouldn't write that on the test in red sharpie, of course, red vivid. So, all right, three pretty similar questions. Moving on. Now, here's here's the big guns. Here's where we 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 get really mathematical here. Make x the subject of this equation. All right. Now this one took some time, so let's just uh, work through it here. We want to get x by itself, but x is an exponent, so we must use some logs here. Here's what I did. Now this is not, maybe there's other ways to do it, but here's how I tackled this. I looked at this bx plus 1, and I know when I add exponents, that means I'm multiplying powers. So this is like b to the x times b to the 1. Okay, that's what that means right there. And so I went, uh, okay, so that just means that a to the 2x equals b to the x just times times b. All right. Now, where I'm going with this? Well, usually, I want to get x by itself, so I'll get both of the x things on the left side. So I'll divide this side by b to the x, and I'll, I'll say divide by b to the x, and I'm left with b. All right. That's, that's cool. I'm getting there. Now here, I'm going to do something a little sneaky. It's not really sneaky. I'm going to say this is a squared to the power of x, which is true, because 2 times x is what we do when we multiply, when we take a power to a power, over b to the x equals b. Okay, now here, I've got the same exponent here. And what what this is equal to, this is, a, this is just an exponent rule. This is a power rule. This is equal to a squared over b all to the power of x. All right, so that's the big step right there. 
Now I do logs. Now I take the log of both sides. Okay, I say, all right. Uh, whoops, let me get this. Log a squared over b x equals log b. And then when I simplify this bit, uh, if that's an exponent, it's going to get multiplied to the log. So this is x log, oop, getting kind of messy here, a squared over b equals log b. And now if I want to get x by itself, I'm going to divide by this whole thing here. So I say, okay, oh, I'm almost there. x equals log b divided by log a squared over b. Okay, now that looks pretty good. X is, it looks like it's by itself, but there's one little log rule hiding here. And that's when I have a division thing going on here. That's when I subtract the logs. And it has to do with uh, power rules and exponents. So my final answer is going to be x equals log b over log a squared minus log b. Wow, that was a good one. Okay, take that in. That's a beauty. Next one. All right, the last two problems of question one. We've got the market value of Sue's house has been increasing at a constant exponential rate of 3% per annum per year since she bought it 16 years ago at the start of 1999, and now it's gone up to 350000 Assuming the exponential growth is of this form, which should look somewhat familiar, kind of like compound interest formula, what was the value of the house at the start of 1999 when she bought it? So they're asking for the original amount at 1999. Now, when we have this formula, this represents the original amount, like the principal, and this is the current amount or the new amount um, over here. So I'm just going to set up this equation. The, the current amount is 350,000. All right. The original amount, I don't know what that is. The rate is 3% per annum, and it goes up each year. So what we need to remember is we don't put this. This amount we put in right here is 1.03 because that's a 3% increase. A 3% increase is 1.03. And how many years? I think it says 16. Or I could have just yeah looked at the time span. 16. Okay. Now, this is where we could make mistakes on calculators. Don't round here. Do not round when you take this to the power of 16. In fact, what I do is I, I'll just divide the new amount by that this whole chunk over here. So I'll say 1.03 to the power of 16, okay? And that, that gives me my, my amount there, okay? And, yeah, we do have to be careful with calculator work here. And I got 218,108 and 49 cents, which I'll probably just leave off there. Okay, I'll just say... We usually don't, when we purchase a home, don't include the cents, just the dollar amount. There we go. All right. Uh, what about this one? So this this is good because we're going to be using this for this problem here. All right. A friend also bought a house at the start of 1999 that cost 200000 Its market value also has been steadily increasing at a slightly higher exponential rate. Okay, let's just say if it's a 3.5% increase, that means 1.035. Oh, they put it right there. Okay, hello. Uh, it's value, and they give us the formula. All right, that's that's great. Now, if these two houses, this house and this house, continue to keep increasing in value at the original rates, in which year will the two houses be worth the same amount? All right, so it has to do with time. So we're going to be solving for this T, and when we get that, when we get that, if it's 10, we're, we're going to have to, Add it on to, to 2015. Okay. Is that right? Let me check that. No, sorry. We don't add it on to 2015. We're going to add it on to 1999. All right. Whatever T is gets added on to that. 
and that tells us when the two houses will be the same price. All right, so the first thing we're going to do on this one is if the two houses are going to be equal price, we're going to set this equation, this expression right here, equal to the expression to get the value of this house. And I don't have that, but I have all the, the parts of it. So up here, uh, the, the new house price is going to be the original, 218108 times the rate that this is increasing, which is 1.8. to T years. Okay, so the, uh, they didn't ask me to write the equation here, but I'm going to need it to set it equal to this one. All right, so we set these two equal to each other like this, and I'm going to solve for t. And as you can tell, it's, a, it's going to be a using logarithms, and I've got the exponent on both sides of the equation. So first step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to it doesn't matter which side I divide by these coefficients here, but I'm going to divide this 218,000 by 200,000, and I'll just get 1.035 to the power of t equals this amount divided by this amount gives me 1.09054 times 1.03 to the power of t. And I put that out to a lot of decimal places just to be more exact. All right, um, because we've got a lot of rounding and decimals here, and I don't want to do any premature rounding just yet, or just ever, really. Uh, next step, what do, what do I do next? Well, I can divide this by this to get the t's on one side. That seems to make a little bit of sense. So I'll say 1.035 to the power of t divided by that guy, 1.03 to the power of t is going to give me this value right here, 1.0905. Four. And again, similar, these, these questions all have something in common because now this is like, it's kind of like this one right here where I can re rewrite this fractional exponent thing as, as this, 1.035 over 1.03 all to the power of t equals 1.09054. All right, so you can see where I'm going with this. We're going to use logarithms again. I simplified this. I did this division here first, and I have to do some rounding. 1.0049 to the power of t gives me this amount. I'm showing all my working to hopefully make it somewhat clear. And now I use logarithms to find t, and I'll just do a little shortcut here. I know that the logarithm is going to be Log of this divided by log of that. How's that? Log of this, 1.09054 divided by that log. 0 0.0049. Now here's where, when I was working this problem out, I had to stop, think about it, and think about the rounding. I get something like 17.73, and I think... I did it to 3DP. This is in years, years, and that's to three decimal places. Okay, so that's cool. That's good. I've solved for T, which, would done, which is the original kind of part of the problem. But it says in which year, in which year. So that means it's 17.732 years after 1999. Now, if, uh, are you still going to get it right if you round this to 18? I'm not sure. We'll find out. And next year, what the marking schedule says, I would say leave it like this and just say 1999 plus that 17.732 years will, will give you the answer because it's not we don't want to round this too much. So here's what I mean. I add that on to 1999 and in which year it's, it's going to be just after midway of 2016, not... 2017, so if I rounded that to 18 years, that would have given me an answer of 2017, and actually they become the same price just after July of 2016. So I'm going to say in 2016, they become roughly the same price. Okay, so that's question one of 2015 Algebra Level 2 exam. All right, thanks for watching.